Jessica Alstrom, spiritual teacher, medical intuitive, and quantum integration specialist, answers your spiritual questions and assists you through understanding your personal process while providing tools and techniques to move swiftly through the journey back to light. Hello and welcome to another Transcendence Podcast. This is your host, Jessica Alstrom. And this morning I was very inspired to uh, do a podcast on some inner child work that I do. Um, I probably am best known for my um, shadow work, my inner child work, my PTSD work. And I never thought I would find myself uh, down in the depths of the shadows in the spiritual realm. But... As I started my journey, it was all love and light, and I quickly realized that there was a lot of aspects about myself and other people that were not so loving and full of light, and I have decided to kind of dedicate my life to um, helping people lighten up in the dark. And it has been extremely fulfilling to me to be able to do this work because I will tell you that uh, when we actually go through something instead of around something and really work through Uh, issues that are holding us back, those feelings of being stuck, blocked, that's not something that you can just positively think your way out of sometimes, um, especially if you're kind of avoiding the situation. Now, you can turn any negative into a positive, but if we're avoiding our lives by just trying to have positive thinking, and then we're really kidding ourselves. And so... um, For you out there who are actually going through the Light Coaching Certification Masterclass, I know you're feeling that it's pretty intense right now. We have dived down deep into the inner child spectrum, and last week we covered basically the four core soul wounds of a child. And I thought I would just do a little quick overview for people who are in the class and obviously people who are not in the class so that you can just have kind of this basic idea of what we do here at Transcendence as far as um, what type of childhood work we do. It's very, very advanced childhood work, kind of like if you were going to work with someone to figure out what core beliefs you have. We figure out in this particular class at this stage of the certification is what the soul wounds are. Because when a soul is pure and authentic, it is perfection. We know that. It's untainted. And it remains that way. But lifetime after lifetime after lifetime, you know, sometimes that light can feel very dulled. Um, Or being on a a brand new experience, maybe you don't have a lot of experiences being on this planet and everything feels very new and you're extra sensitive. Therefore, you know, the more sensitive you are, the the more you feel the wound that takes place. So I kind of wanted to dive into what I have, de- you know, developed over the last 10 years as far as the four basic wounds that, that I work through on a core soul level. Um, are there more wounds? Absolutely. But I will tell you that I like to keep things very simple and not overcomplicate and, you know, write textbooks and textbooks of philosophy and psychology in order to find a root cause. And that's what we're doing is we're going in and we're finding the root cause. So hopefully after this podcast, you can become the observer in your environment and you will be able to pick out the wounds that you're seeing people uh, portray. Because the thing is, uh, something about a wound is that... um, With beautiful law of attraction, it keeps opening the wound. So let me give you an example. First, I'll go into it. The four basic wounds of the four core soul wounds that basically develop our whole fabric of reality are um, I am not seen, I am not heard, I am not loved or I am unlovable, I am not nurtured or I am not safe. So those are the four soul wounds that I see every single day in my office, regardless of how perfect you think your childhood was. Because in the perspective of a soul who comes down here for a very unique purpose, we see the world through the filters that we came in with. And we came, we choose the filters in order to play out our themes and have the lessons that we can, um, you know, walk through in this life. So basically the I'm not seen is 
let me paint a picture for you. I am not seen for my authentic self. How many times have you felt that in your adult life? How many times have you felt that as a child? You know, because you come in here very unique, which means that you're not like anyone else. And the thing about a family dynamic is everyone kind of has to mold around the strongest personality in the house. So if dad is emotionally unavailable, that means that you're not probably going to get the attention and you're not going to be seen for who you came to be. You need to be more of what he needs you to be in order to deal with his wound. And I think that we've all kind of experienced that on some level with someone. And the I am not seen has so many different layers. Um, it has, you know, the, the, you, you were um, being goofy and silly and someone told you that you looked stupid. You know, it can be attached to humiliation. It can be attached to guilt. It can be attached to shame. It can be attached to fear. You know, um, maybe you, if you were in a dangerous situation, then you weren't seen for a pure child as you were. You were seen as something else for someone else's enjoyment, you know, if you've had abuse. So the I am not seen reflects throughout our life because our core belief systems are developed before age seven. And that is because of the way that our brains are so malleable and so absorbing and so sponge-like. And they're very very open without a lot of judgment, which means that we haven't decided whether something is wrong or right. We're just kind of going with the flow and therefore everything is true. You know, mom's behavior of not loving you properly becomes true for you, which means now everyone is going to feel that way towards you and you're going to perpetuate that through law of attraction. And that's going to start you on your journey of basically your long journey of healing because most people don't realize that they're not seen for who they properly are until they wake up. And once you wake up, it's almost like that starts all over again because now you become this oddity in your family and you become the black sheep or maybe you always were, but now when you're on your spiritual journey, you look crazy. So you're not seen for this divine, authentic, high vibrational being that you came here to be. And so you distort how you see yourself. And we know if you've taken my workshops, you know that I'm very adamant about um, locking down ego personalities because so many people come to me and say, what's the difference between my ego's desires and my um, soul's desires? And I always say, it's how you feel. But I will tell you that the ego only has two personalities, and that is victim and it is perpetrator. So anytime you're feeling victimized or you're feeling like you need to perpetrate onto something else or someone else in order for you to have the life that you want, that's not you. So that's plain and simple. And you can think about the relationships that you have that you're not the victim or perpetrator of. Those relationships don't contain ego. And I'm talking about everything, the relationship that you have with money, the relationship you have with time, the relationship you have with your body. You know, how are you a victim of your body? Are you perpetrating on your body? Are you self-abusing? So there's certain aspects of us where we integrate ego into our wounds. And as I go through these wounds, you're really going to start to see um, – how you've kind of built the fabric of your reality based on your observations, experiences, and um, trials and errors based in the wounds that you've collected as a child. Now, none of this is bad. It's just you came here perfect. You got layered and layered and layered with shadow aspects um, that weren't you, that weren't true. And then you spend the rest of your life basically, un, you know, undoing it. And that's the spiritual journey. It's waking up to the truth of who you are. And who you were when you came here is exactly who you will find when you move through enlightenment. And to me, enlightenment is just about you're no longer triggered by life. You're no longer in that cause and effect spiral. You're more neutral, which means things can come and go and you're not defining them as good or bad. You're just being with the situation as if it was the perfect situation and you're not really feeling anything other than joy about it. To me, that's enlightenment and that's what we're all working to. But we have to locate where the wounds and belief systems are through the triggers. 
So perfect example of someone who, as an adult, is carrying the deep soul wound of I am not seen is going to be the one who talks over you, the one that it's all about them, the one that is got the stories and stories and stories, and maybe they start repeating stories. It could be your narcissist. It could be your, um, you know, someone who is, you know, gets into your personal space and is very needy on you. Um, it could be your eating disorders, um, because that's how you're, uh, you know, kind of trying to cover yourself up. You're, you're, you're feeling like you want to be seen and you're feeling like then you don't want to be seen. So it's kind of that perpetual thing that the wound of I am not seen tends to be half introvert, half, half extrovert. And I definitely carried that wound my whole life because nobody in my house saw me for who I really was. And therefore, I had to basically shut who I was down, become a version of what it was expected of me, and develop all of these arbitrary personality qualifications in order to basically survive. So, and if you've noticed when I say narcissist, I want you to go back to the initial initial ego personalities and ask yourself, is that a victim or a perpetrator? Because... I am not seen can, you can play out I am not seen, the wound of I am not seen by either being the victim or you can play it out by being the perpetrator. So think of it like this, if I am completely introverted, then I am the victim of I am not seen. If I am the narcissist, then I am the perpetrator of I am not seen. I am like forcing myself on you. That's perpetration. Victimization is introverting, which means I can't be seen. And that's going to be your shy t or your really low talker or the one that, you know, you're always going, huh, what? You know, you're not hearing them. Um, I'm going to go down just a list of some of the other uh, qualifications that lie within this particular wound. Introverted, um, underweight, you know, you, you're, you have, you know, you can't keep weight on you or your body is just really rejecting food. Um, unappreciated or the complete martyr. You know, unappreciated, that feeling of I'm unappreciated is that I'm not seen for who I am and what I do. The martyr is the same thing. Uh, allergies, meaning that, you know, I'm, I'm not seen for um, the way that my body needs to be in the environment. You feel overlooked. You feel uh, plain in your appearance. Uh, you feel unattractive. Uh, you feel alone. You feel passed up for jobs, promotions, skin issues, eye issues, odor issues, narcissism, extrovert, extreme extrovert, overly outgoing or talkative to the point of inappropriate conversation, boundary issues. You could be overweight if you were going to perpetrate yourself, um, lack of adventure in life, not feeling like you deserve uh, adventure, meaning you're not allowed to see the world, irrational fears, headaches, lots of self-pressure, chronic car accidents, caretaker without any appreciation, addicted to social media or obsession with others, looking at their lives, jealousy issues, self-esteem issues, chronic gossiper, fear of public speaking, loss, chronic colds, balance issues, vertigo, complaining, uh, no drive in life, no goals, third eye chakra blockage, constantly feeling judged by others and feeling very judged by self, critical of others' appearance or status, feeling of being improperly seen or misrepresented, blamed consistently, feeling invisible. Okay, so that's just a basic little outline of what we go through in class, but I wanted to just lay it out there so hopefully one or two of those struck with you. Now, if this is a core wound that you have, you will de develop a ton of beliefs around this particular wound, and this will perpetuate out and build your life. So if you've got this, the, the wound of I am not seen, then what happens is that you become unseen all through life, no matter what you do. And whether you victimize yourself or perpetrate yourself in this behavior, you're still playing it out. And you'll find patterns in your life where you're constantly feeling unseen. Well, let's jump into the next one because I don't have a ton of time today, but I really felt inspired to give you guys this. Um, the next one is I am not heard, okay? And this is going to be, um, oh, let me re recalibrate on the first one. I'm not seen is going to be um, eye issues, okay? Also seeing issues, uh, meaning that I don't like what I'm seeing, things like that. Um, you're going to have more eye issues. 
And as we jump into the I am not heard, you're going to have the hearing issues, right? You're going to have the ringing in your ears. You're going to have the low talker, the speech issues, the sinus issues, the allergies to sound or smells. Um, this is going to be your PTSD around um, vibration. This is going to be migraines, bipolar, ADHD, fears of the paranormal, anger, rage, grief, loss, manifest losing people, inability to express ideas confidently, low self-esteem, mental block of creativity, low um, motivation, writing blocks, relays gossip and feeds it off to others as someone else, attracted to emotional bu abusive relationships, attracted to emotional unavailable relationships, Okay, because again, your biochemistry gets the download of what wound you're playing out and it perpetuates. So you become sexually attracted and physically attracted to your very perpetrator. So you have to keep in mind that your body is constantly listening to your mind. Your body is the biography of your mind. So everything that you're thinking and believing about yourself, the body takes that information and it creates its own um, desires based on what you believe. So let's jump into it. S jobs in sales, okay? This could be, um, you could be the con artist. Uh, the I am not heard is the perpetual I want to be a teacher or a counselor. The politician, the self-sabotager, um, the self-sabotager of your own time and resources. Avid researcher, okay? And I'm hoping that you're flipping, flopping back on victim and perpetrator in this outline because... The thing, as I read down the lists of the wounds uh, characteristics, some of these are victim and some of these are perpetrator. Okay, so you kind of have to do that due diligence and decide what uh, resonates within you. Uh, professional student, academic. This is the person who is just always in school and never actually does anything with it. Um, they just feel like they perpetually need to go to school. Uh, boring life, feeling like ideal, um, you know, idle ruts constantly. Uh, struggles with creative uh, feelings, not feels, doesn't feel creative, doesn't feel like an artist, doesn't feel important. Uh, Brain-body connection out of alignment. This is going to be your balance issues, your vertigo. Tells same stories over and over again. Uh, lives in the past. This is a wound that I see a lot, is someone who is not heard in life. They will go back to the glory days because they don't feel like there's anything going to be for them in the future. This person also has a fear of the future, fear of government, the loner, the codependent. See, you've got victim and perpetrator there, submissive, masochist, victim, perpetrator. Um, let's see. Lives in the past, fear of the future, great, loner, codependent, thief, liar, cheater, manipulator. Drug of choice is going to be alcohol, marijuana, and oxycodone cotton, okay, for this particular wound. Now, you can see that as the wound develops, you could just say, well, I, my dad was an alcoholic, right? Well, we know by studying epigenetics here at Transcendence that we can turn DNA off and on based on what we believe. So we can turn our family's DNA off. We don't have to buy into um, what it is that they are just because they were an alcoholic we could also find a DNA strand in our lineage that is you know Olympic athlete and we could start vibrating that frequency and turn that DNA on our bodies too so we don't want to be victimized by our genetics so we've got seen and heard and you will see this wound a lot. And the reason why I'm sharing this with you is not so that you can be a professional counselor and walk around and start judging people. You're not doing this to judge people or yourselves. You're doing this to understand people. Because when you can have awareness of why people act the way that they act, you can begin to have compassion. Because I will tell you, at the basis of any negative behavior is a wounded child. I promise you. There is no bad people. There are hurt people. And the more wounding that someone has, the more out of balance in their natural essence of love they will demonstrate. You know, no one is born a liar. Um, lying is developed through basically an inability to feel safe telling their truth, okay? And that can perpetuate into something that can be automatic. Someone who steals, you know, they, they, are, they are dealing from a wound where they don't believe that they can have what they want. Or they can create what they want through a, a non-criminal um, activity format. 
So we have to realize is that everyone on their journey is dealing with some core wound that is perpetuated by a belief system that manifests as a mindset and that mindset basically runs their entire life. I'm going to ask you, look at your self-sabotaging behavior and find the wound, okay? So the next core wound is the wound of being uh, over-nurtured or under-nurtured. And this is also about safety issues. So for me, um, you know, we moved a lot. Um, 41 years old this year, I've moved probably about 43 times. So that's more than once a year. And not in my adulthood, but in my childhood, sometimes we moved every six months. And I will tell you that if you've taken any of my classes, um, there are six basic needs of the child and uh, security and um, certainty is one of those things. And when you don't know where you're going to be, that is, become, becomes an automatic deep wound. And in my adulthood, I realized that I had this like gypsy behavior where every time something would get uncomfortable, the highest excitement I could think of was to move. You know, it was like, okay, just start over because that's what my biochemistry, that's what my nervous system was so accustomed to was just move, move, move. What I didn't realize is that I wasn't creating those fundamental roots of security within my own being and therefore I didn't feel safe. So this could be, this particular wound happens a lot inside of the womb, okay? Um, the mom is completely stressed out. You know, if I told you what stress did to your body, you would stop worrying immediately because it creates such an acidic uh, environment inside the body when you worry that it, it doesn't, it's not a balanced place for a baby to grow. Regardless of how perfect your diet is, no matter, you know, the, anything that you do with supplementation, if you're worried, you have an acidic environment. Well, my mom, so she smoked with me because that's what they did in those times and, you know, took pills or whatever. And it wasn't like that big of a deal back in those days to think that that was going to be, you know, hard. Well, you know, nicotine, it robs the body of B vitamins. So here I am in the womb with a very stressed out, very fearful mother who was smoking and possibly drinking and you know and here I am trying to grasp onto oxygen and build a body out of that so this particular wound can start all the way back inside mom's womb now obviously this was a choice that we came in to as to be part of our theme to what we would grow out of here on the planet but still nevertheless it creates a fundamental wound um, not being breastfed, okay, not having that close nurturing relationship with mom or having a very traumatic birth can create this this fundamental wound of, of nurturing. Um, emotionally unattached mom, someone who is going through, you know, uh, the baby blues. Um, mom and dad arguing, you know, not to mention any form of abuse that could happen. The wound of nature, the nurture wound, and the wound of safety, I would say that is probably the um, the one that I see the most in my office, this is going to be all of your money issues. This is going to be the lack of abundance. No matter how much you money you have, you're not going to feel like it's enough. Um, you're not going to have a desire to exercise. Um, lack of adventure. You're going to feel like it's not safe. So you're going to have this chronic feeling of you're not safe, and you're not going to really know where this is coming from. Okay? Now, a lot of times when I see a child that's been over-nurtured, uh, what they do is they're really shut down because they don't really feel like they have to go create anything. Everything has been given to them. And what happens is when something, when a child is over-nurtured, they don't really turn on their own desire system to figure out, they don't they don't become the problem solver because you're the problem solver. So they never have to turn that on with themselves. And when you don't solve their problems, they get very upset with you. And it creates that entitlement relationship where it's all your fault. I'm sure some of you can experience that. Or, I mean, I know that our generation, because we were under-nurtured, in my generation, that we had a tendency to over-nurture our kids in this generation, and so we're all kind of now dealing with that. I definitely over-nurtured some aspects of my kids when they were younger because I wanted them to have everything I didn't. But we have to realize that they are 
souls that are just as old as us and they've got to learn to turn on their own unique desire and um, solution solver mechanisms within their own being and if we do everything for them they don't have to do that and they get to blame us for not so I just wanted to throw that out there so the the safety wound is is going to be your your um, feelings of not being safe. You're going to be a perfectionist. You're going to be a control freak. Chronic fight or flight, infertility, allergies to animals, allergies to food, allergies to environment, breast and sex organ cancers, illnesses. This is going to be your fibromyalgia. This is going to be um, a lot of the autoimmune issues. Uh, this is going to be... Um, uh, Financial troubles, and what that means is that you're never going to feel safe with the money that you do have, which means that by law of attraction, you're going to have a desire within you to spend every dollar you have or hoard every dollar you have and still feel like you don't have anything. Okay, so I'm hoping, too, that you're checking in on the perpetrator and victim type of swing back that this particular wound can have because when you have these safety issues and you're victimized by that, right, you're going to feel like, the world is not safe, okay? And when you perpetrate on that safety issues, you're going to try to, like, steal people's safety, if that makes sense. You're going to kind of, like, take that. Um, that's, like I said, that's going to be your control issues, that your OCD, uh, you know, like I said, you could be completely a perfectionist or you could be completely messy and out of control. You could have complete lack of hygiene or you could be a germaphobe. Um, you feel stolen from, which means that you're going to be the person, if you have this particular wound, that your identity is going to be stolen. Um, or if you're going to perpetrate it, you will steal someone's identity, okay? Polycystic fibrosis, prostate issues, uh, back and shoulder pain accidents affecting the backs and shoulders, abusive relationships, okay? So someone with this particular nurturing wound does not know what a proper healthy relationship feels like. So they will jump into abusive relationships, and that could be emotional, physically, or chemically emotion abusive, but they are still diving into it, and they think that that's love. And the reason why is their body has learned to nurture through basically neglect, okay? Uh, food poisoning. This is a person who's going to get chronic food poisoning. Viruses, bacterial infections, parasites. Think about it. If I'm not safe, I'm going to be a vibrational match to food poisoning and parasites and all these different types of allergies. This is going to be your low sex drive. And the reason why is your adrenal glands are going out of control. And your adrenal glands produce sex, organ sex hormones. And so it's going to throw off your balance of what you actually desire. Okay. It could also be extremely high sex drive that is, um, you know, again, victim perpetrator. Porn, sex addiction, promiscuity, uh, not, does not have the ability to commit, feels abandoned, miscarriages, or has lots and lots of children. So you can see the back and forth here. Uh, this person usually does not know how to be alone or feels like they have to be alone to feel safe. This is self-neglect. Passive-aggressive behavior, paranoid, drug of choice would be opiates, acid, heroin, and meth. Uh, emotional eater, emotional numb or shut down, child abuser or, or um, is an abused child. Self-neglect again, but in the way of, you know, isolation and also neglecting others. Okay, so you can see the victim-perpetrator role of the ego in that particular wound. Now you slap belief systems on this and you start to literally have the eyes of this wound and that's why I don't get into confrontations with anyone and this is why when you're dealing with someone who is in complete belief of their reality and they are in their universe and they're dealing with their wounds and they're dealing with their belief systems they can only see through their eyes hear through their ears and talk with their mouth and feel through their body what they have experienced so if they have experienced these particular wounds, it doesn't matter what you say. They are going to hear through those set of eyes or those set of ears and those set of eyes. And they are going to change what you're saying and morph what you're saying into processing it through this wound. And the perfect example of this, and I wanted to give you guys two examples because I have personally experienced this, is... My brother and I were about four years apart, and he was younger than me, and we, 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 built, we dealt with the same sort of abuse growing up. We both kind of lived very um, similar lives in what we experienced. 
And looking back over it now, his version of what happened and my version of what happened is night and day. It's kind of like trying to ask your siblings if they remember certain things and they're like, I don't even know what you're talking about. But even though we dealt with the same type of wounds growing up and the same type of abuse, I decided to process my entire childhood through being the victim. Okay, so I learned to lie to get out of stuff. I learned to manipulate. I learned to, um, you know, I was very codependent, very needy. I was very much the victim of my abuse. Now, my brother chose the other role. He chose to be the fighter at school. He was the one constantly getting the uh, detentions, and he was constantly, you know, getting kicked out of school, and he was... Uh, littler, so he was the, had the little man's complex of, of not being seen and heard and, and the neglect. And so he found himself feeling like he had to fight for his survival, and I felt like I needed to be a victim to survive. So two same exact childhoods, pretty much, but I chose victim and he chose perpetrator. And to this day, he's the guy who gets in bar fights. You know, he's the one that chose to uh, dive into drugs and have all of those experiences. And I was the one who wouldn't touch a drug because I was afraid to not be in control. So again, it's all how your ego decides which is going to be safer as a exploration through that particular wound and belief system is, do I choose victim or do I choose perpetrator? Now, I will tell you that when it comes to yourself, you're going back and forth between victim and perpetrator a lot, okay? You hate yourself, and then you love yourself. You hate yourself, you love yourself, right? So you're self-abusing a lot. We do this a lot because of these particular wounds. So I hope this is making sense so far. This is really um, a lot of our deep, deep work that we do in class because, again, I'm only breaking this down to four categories, but you can see now looking around that people are literally processing their personalities through their particular wound, and they're not bad people. They're just really trying to live a life that they believe is true. And the example that I can give you is, is I had the wound. I had actually all four of these wounds. Uh, I definitely wasn't seen and heard as a child. I wasn't safe as a child. I wasn't nurtured as a child, and the love that I got from my family was conditional, which means if I acted a certain way, then I felt loved sometimes, but otherwise it was very conditional feeling, which then put me into being a very judgmental person where I could only love people on conditions. So I learned that through my first seven years um, of my own particular journey. Um, the thing that I remember in my marriage about five years ago that really, really stood out to me when I was learning all of these wounds in meditation was that um, I never felt like my husband loved me. And I always felt like, you know, he didn't see me and he didn't hear me. And I remember when we got separated uh, for a while, he came and sat down with me. And I had, been, I had done a bunch of childhood work around relationships at that point. And he kind of grabbed my shoulders and shook me and said, I tried to tell you every single day that I loved you and you wouldn't hear me. So what's actually happening? And that was an aha moment for me because I kind of remembered back and I was like, wow, he really did do that. I just wasn't present in my moment of clarity and awareness to believe him because I'd never had anyone say that and it was – and it felt true before. So when he said it, it was almost like criticism. And I know that you people who have been in relationships can kind of understand what I'm saying is when someone says they love you, but you don't love yourself, you kind of think that they're almost criticizing you or putting you down or being passive aggressive about it. You don't even believe that it's true because you can't believe it because that's not how you learned to be loved as a child. So that's my little story, but I wanted to jump back into the final wound before we end off, and that is the wound of I am not loved or I am unlovable. And I will tell you that this is the most intense wound. This is the wound that um, a lot of us have had when we had parents who didn't love themselves, you know, or if we had parents that were in a lot of fear or shut down. We didn't learn that feeling of of unconditional love and it wasn't given freely to us uh, like it should be because all we are is love. So when the very essence of what we are is becomes distorted in the first seven years, it really kind of creates a mass conflict between the soul and the ego. And 
the ego begins to be kind of a power junkie instead of a love junkie because it's needing something to fill that giant hole within that love needed to be filled with. So I wanted to kind of jump into some of the characteristics of that and some of the characteristics, and I will tell you, this is where it gets really heavy and this is where people end up in mental hospitals when they aren't loved properly, is this is going to be, you know, depending on the depth of the lack of love that was given to a child, um, this could be your serial killer, this could be your rapist, this could be your, um, you know, this could be your child abuser, this could be... Uh, the person who is cutting themselves. This could be the person that is hurting themselves to the point where, you know, they they don't care. They ha they're completely numb. Um, they're shut down to the point where they can't feel source energy anymore, and they become basically a walking ego that is self fulfilling through taking power over someone else, um, and 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 stealing power. So stealing your essence, stealing your power and stealing your own power. This is going to be the one who is going to not eat food, you know, until they die. This is going to be your suicide. This is all suicide. This is the wound of suicide. Okay. There was a deep disconnection between themselves and feeling the absolute joy of being loved or feeling lovable. And they can't stand to be here. You know, it becomes unbearable. Um, you know, this is going to be your uh, person who's dealing with, you know, s several hundred pounds of being overweight. This is going to be the person who, you know, doesn't, like I said, won't let themselves eat. Um, this is going to be the person who has got um, stomach diseases, okay, Pers again, solar plexus, personal power, um, this is going to be your heart conditions. This is going to be your your heavy blood, your um, brain issues. These these are the cancers that are going to follow in these particular wounds, and and as they perpetuate and aren't looked at and cleared through the belief systems and mindsets of the personal awareness and consciousness, they just perpetuate, and the belief in in the symptom that manifests from this wound is usually what is focused on instead of saying, you know what, I keep having this heart condition, I feel very shut down, I'm not letting anybody in my in relationships. I will tell you this particular wound too is also the person who has really toxic, toxic relationships where it's very highly abusive or very, very neglectful. And uh, and they are, you know, going to be the ones that feel the most lost in life. You know, it's not like your basic fear. This is like a deep, deep, deep grief. And if you've ever heard talk me talk about the emotional tone scale, I will tell you that grief is below fear as far as the lowest vibration and emotional feeling that a human can feel is deep grief. And fear is right above it. And the reason why fear is right above it is because we're afraid to feel the grief. So we move into fear and then we start acting in basically delusion and desperation because the only choice you ever have in uh, fear is desperation because you only have access to the thoughts and feelings that are in the vibration of what you're, what you're imagining. And that's why I talk so much about gratitude. It's the get out of jail, get out of funk, quick card. Uh, but this particular podcast is about the wounds and I wanted to just share this today because this is something that we're really diving down deep into class with class and I know a lot of people out there who are not in, um, in the, taking the class and getting through the certification are still dealing with this in life and when you can kind of understand why you do the things you do. And you have to realize that there is a broken record playing at the base of your subconscious mind over and over again that's saying, I'm not heard, I'm not seen, I'm not loved, I'm not safe. And that's why you have money issues and that's why you have lack of motivation and that's why you can't get to the gym and that's why you can't eat well. And it's that's where all of your self-sabotage comes is from the core, unprocessed, root, soul, wound that has developed its belief systems around it. Because I promise you, if you have a belief that I am not seen and heard, I am not loved and I am not nurtured, you're not going to feel valuable. You're not going to feel lovable. 
you are not going to feel good enough. You're not going to feel worthy because you know what? The first seven years, you were made to believe that you weren't. And the first seven years is where all of your core belief systems reside. Okay? Now, we choose this particular family structure on a sole reason to work out and through certain lessons that we came to experience. So I'm not saying any of this is bad. This is just diving down deep into the more understanding of who we are so that we can have compassion for the people who walk next to us. So I promise that the next time that you see someone who is just talking loud and needing attention and, and you know, putting all of their victories on Facebook, is, is they're not doing it to, to piss you off. They're doing it because they don't feel seen and heard. And I hope that, you know, the one thing that you do by listening to my podcast is have more compassion for other people on their journey because it doesn't need to make sense to you. You don't have the same wound as them necessarily, or you've decided to victimize yourself and and they've decided to perpetrate the same wound. And I will tell you that most relationships that you are attracted to are harboring the same wounds, but one of you is playing the victim and one of you is playing the perpetrator. And that becomes your beautiful twin flame heroin type of relationship where it is like really good and really bad and really toxic. And you're basically playing out the same wound together, but one of you is victimizing and the other one is perpetrators. And sometimes that flip flops and you play that out for 25 years and you call it a marriage. But um, at, the, at the truth of the basis is, is this is kind of what we do in class as far as diving down deep into the childhood. I want to get my life coaches so um, dialed in to these wounds that when someone comes and sits in their office as a client, just by hearing their initial you know, conversation of their story, they will be able to pick out what wounds and how they're manifested and whether they choose to victimize or perpetrate themselves and then be able to kind of write a program, a regression program or a life coaching program in regards to their particular journey because not everybody is dealing with the same wounds here and belief systems. So you know, here's your little homework is go out into your family and start finding the wounds and start having compassion and sending love because everyone is just a lost little child. Anyone with bad behavior is just basically a child that's having a tantrum. And if you can send some love and say, uh, walk up to that person who is not seen and say, you know what, I really see you for who you are. And that's all you say and walk away. On a subconscious level, that soul will get it especially because you're non-biased to their emotional train wreck, okay? If someone's not being heard, you say, I really hear you, and you touch their arm, okay? And that's it. You walk away. Someone who is not safe, someone who doesn't feel like um, they have enough or they're good enough, that's, that's going to be the neglect, the safety issues. That's when you let them know, hey, I'm here for you, and... And you don't try to push anything because I'm going to tell you, someone with the the wound of not being nurtured or saved does not trust you. They don't. They don't trust you. So you've got to make it so that, you know, you're aware of that wound within them. And it's almost like you're sending them a little piece of love and saying, I identify with what you're going through. And I might not be walking in those shoes, but I hear you and I see you and I feel you. And as an empath, you are feeling all of these wounds and it is triggering all of your own. With someone with the love issues, they're going to need the gentlest touch because they're the ones who've turned against themselves. And those are the ones that all you can do is be a light in the dark for them. And it's less about what you say and it's more about your presence because that particular wound is extremely um, self-inflicting pain. And so the best thing that you can do for that person is just let them know that you are there when they are ready and don't try to push or assert yourself onto them because they will just push back. All right. So this is a podcast about the four wounds. Um, anybody who is interested in doing this certification with me, please email me because, you know, if this information resonates with you, we, We need good practitioners in this world that understand more than just law of attraction and how to be positive. We need someone who's going to walk in the dark with people. And that is the thing that I will tell you is the most rewarding thing is when you actually know how to do that for someone. It brings all of your empathy to um, use. 
it brings all of those spiritual gifts that you've got within you out to the forefront where you can actually use them and you're not just doing a healing on someone and they come back a week later all broken again because they haven't healed that wound you know if I if I cut my arm and I left it alone it would heal properly but if I cut my arm and I kept opening it by getting triggered by other people who are not hearing me and seeing me and feeling me and loving me, then that wound is never going to heal. And I promise you that all disease is based around these emotional wounds first. Because every time I've ever looked at anyone intuitively for a body condition, I see at the basis a deep emotional wound that base turned into a body symptom. So understand these wounds, understand the wounds that you're carrying for mom and dad, because when you're turning DNA on and off, you're tapping into their wounds too as an empath. So I'll leave you with that. Obviously, there's a lot more to this. There are six basic needs of a child. I'll be doing a podcast on that. But it's about recognizing the wounds within yourself and sending love to those wounds. It's about recognizing the wounds to others. And instead of judging them, how about loving them? So look, look me up, uh, Transcendence Wellness Center KC. I'm sorry, I don't even know my own website. Uh, TranscendenceKC.com is our website. If you want more information on this particular certification that we're doing here at Transcendence, it's a Master of Light, so you're basically teaching, we're teaching you how to be a light coach. And that is a three-month intensive hands-on learning with a year internship working under me with the idea that you can open up your own Transcendence as a franchise for free anywhere in the planet. And we will help you do that. So I'm going to leave you with that. Um, check in for more podcasts. Go and watch the second Sunday from last month. It was pretty intense. Um, my husband said he couldn't even watch it because I was too loud. So sorry about that. Uh, and, uh, you know, I can't help it. I'm passionate. And uh, please comment on this particular uh, YouTube and all of them and subscribe because that's how we know what to do next or what podcasts to do next. And I love your feedback, so you're feel free to email me too directly at jessalstrom at gmail. And, um, and, and check us out on uh, Facebook and um, Instagram. For now, enjoy your day, and I hope I left you with some food for thought and some self-love for the day. Thank you for joining Jessica on this transcending episode. Email us directly at jessicaallstrom at gmail.com with your questions and personal challenges you would like addressed on the show. And join us on next week's podcast. You are not alone. And remember, your higher self speaks to you through people, places, circumstances, and events. <laughs>